This video is going to be the accumulation of what I've learned on my journey of making manga. We'll be diving down into composition, lighting, and how to get around backgrounds, for example, using geometry nodes in Blender, or incorporating 3D into your work, or the various different websites and various different composition videos that could really just help you along your journey. This video is more of an homage or tribute back into the art community because I've really learned so much from YouTube. I'm self-taught and I try to find videos all over just to kind of help me on my journey. So I hope this video really, really helps you. I think one of the most difficult questions an individual has to ask themselves is am I good enough in any regard or in any pursuit in life and to be honest with you in the pursuit of making manga I've come to realize that this question is probably the biggest one that every artist has to ask themselves making manga is a lot like climbing a mountain as you begin to ascend you begin to realize just how truly unprepared you are for the journey ahead from human anatomy to shading to lighting to background and perspective paneling and page layout to storyboarding and actual dialogue you begin to see how truly difficult it is to actually become a mangaka I believe making manga is a lot like making a feature film on a low budget with one cast one crew one director and you only got one shot at telling the story it's like each time you make any decent progress you stumble across a new hurdle for you to climb oh, hey. Oh, no. Making manga is the embodiment of becoming an overall great artist. And the meme amongst the art community is, well, every artist has a flaw for the most part. Some artists can only draw portraits and can never draw full body pose. And for some artists, it's the other way around. Some artists are good at inking and some artists are just terrible at color theory. And for most artists, we could all come to the agreement that we all just fundamentally hate drawing backgrounds. But for a mangeka, there is no room for flaws. The bar or rather the criteria for you to actually become one is that you must become an overall great artist in every facet of the game. Not something that I'm saying but it's just something that's pretty much the golden standard if you were to actually look at the quality of pages that pros actually produce and that compared to an amateur this could all feel rather overwhelming and to be honest with you that's kind of how i feel right now i think the easiest way that i can relate this is in basketball terminology i am a huge basketball fan and one of my favorite players is LeBron James. I promise I'm going somewhere with this. But the first question that I must ask you is How did the fall of the Eastern Roman capital of Constantinople in 1453 affect the legacy of the 19 time NBA All Star? He's my favorite player because he could pretty much play any position. You could throw him at point guard, you could throw him at center, and he could still play the position. That's what it's like to be a mangeka. Or to ask myself, Am I good enough? To be honest with you, I don't know. But I think a better question would be to ask, What is it that you lack as an artist? As a wise man once said, Fake it till you make it. And another one said, Well, if there is a shortcut, you better take it. So what are the five positions of becoming a mangeka? The first one is the mastery of the human anatomy. The second one is lighting and the fundamental understanding of value. The third one is composition and paneling. The fourth one is background and perspective. And the fifth one is effects, screen tones, speech bubbles, and it's basically the accumulation of wrapping things up and putting the cherry on top. Kind of like putting the whole team together. And there is one more hurdle ahead of you, which is the coach. And the coach could be simplified as deadlines or rather speed and precision one thing you need to understand is a pro completes an entire page in about four hours that's really just what you actually need to meet the first the major position is the understanding of the basic human anatomy this one's a given because well to become someone who can draw various different poses from various different angles one must have a really good grasp of the human anatomy now rest assured there are ways to get around this first one i would recommend this book by the illustrator named taco it's probably the easiest and most simplified version of the human anatomy it's the one you need out of all the anatomy books i've read this one really helped me out just with little things just to break down truly how simplified the anatomy of this is now look if you can't afford the book you could always just go on pinterest look up the book and you'll find various different sample pages now this is another great video if you're more of a visual learner like myself it's called figure drawing fundamentals lessons once the process by richard mithman make sure you check out this video as this one will give you a basic kind of guide and a beginning to kind of your journey into anatomy also the proco series is really good pretty much any video the proco post now by the way every single link that i'm going to be talking about is going to be a link in the description so make sure you check it out the pro series is a beginner's guide and i feel like it's the easiest and one of the most simple ones to kind of jump into proco has a variety of videos but the ones you're looking for are his anatomy videos and also mikey sensei draws uh, the rather phenomenal anime proportions that you are looking for so i'd say start off with proco learn the fundamentals and then jump over to mikey's videos for a more simplified anime look if you know what i mean he breaks down some of the best most well round proportion especially for you know the cultured section of drawing manga now i can give you a thousand links but a faster and more in-depth way is by using clip studio 
paint 3D. Now, I want to make an entire video on the 3D, but first of all, should you even use 3D? To be honest with you, AI exists. Case closed. Now, look, it's a tool to use, and I would say don't draw over it, but maybe for background characters and crowds, sure, go ahead. If you use 3D and draw over it, one, you won't learn, and two, for the most part, people could tell because it's rather stiff. A great video to watch to solve this issue is by watching How to Combine Gesture and Anatomy by Proko. It should help you learn how to draw a dynamic pose. I haven't mentioned the elephant in the room, which is that being is your art style. This one could be an entire video on its own, but finding your art style is probably the biggest hurdle in the beginning because anime has such a broad spectrum of styles. Some are very anime-like, others are close to realism. I think finding your art style could be you know, an entire video on its own. I'm not even going to try to attempt this one, but wait, before you even attempt this, one, you must have a basic understanding of the human head. Now, I suggest reading The Loomis Method by Andrew Loomis, which is probably the best way to draw the human head. Now, after you have mastered The Loomis Method, you must learn to break The Loomis Method, you know, as anime heads don't really follow the Loomis method to a degree. Anime heads tend to be a little bigger than actual human heads to compensate for the eyes. You must first learn to draw somewhat realistic human heads and then you can learn to break down and simplify it. Clip Studio Paint, like I said, has 3D integration within it. There are various different kind of softwares that you could also use. There's one that is called Design Doll, which is a free alternative to Clip Studio Paint. I use 3D all the time because one of the things that you've come to realize in our community is that you're told not to use reference. The stupidest shit I've heard because in actuality, every single pro from manga artists to concept artists all use reference if you got the Loomis method down then step one would be to learn how to light the head this one kind of helps you understand basic lighting and you can just play around with different kind of lighting positions clip studio paint has something very similar with it and uh, you can customize the head into a more of an anime kind of style another great website is called reference angle you're using a 3d scan you're positioning it to the position that you want and then you're clicking search and it shows you actual people that kind of look like that that you're aiming for clip studio paint has the same similar things but as you can see there's a chibi round uh, realistic and you have uh, the customization of the head to your own liking but let's do an example like this for sharp anime drop this bad boy in and you could just move it around and uh, adjust the lighting if you'd like by the way you could go down all the way here and if you click on fast then it should help you move it a lot quicker now like i said you could draw over it most webtoon artists do and no one's really gonna care at the end of the day they're going to read your manga in like two seconds and they're going to come up with their own conclusion your goal is to draw fast but not at the cost of your own personal growth becoming a fraud who must rely on 3d all the time will certainly haunt you in the middle of the night and that's kind of how i see all these tools that i'm going to give you they're just there to help you draw quicker and more precise but should never come at the cost of you becoming a better illustrator and this is why i really advocate learning actual human anatomy i said the downside of using uh, 3d because well it's really stiff and that's kind of the truth you're just gonna have to learn how to portray proper gesture and uh, you could sometimes move the 3d around into a more of a kind of dynamic feel so rest assured you can kind of get around that but yeah it's very difficult sometimes to just kind of learn to grasp human anatomy but the kind of upside to using 3d is you have a reference 24 7 so you don't have to guess if this anatomy is 100 percent correct because well you could just map out the same illustration that you're working on put it to the side of it and just kind of you know do the same thing as you would with a normal reference now we have position number two which is the fundamental understanding of shading and value something that has helped me get a better grasp of proper understanding of value is by watching black and white movies. Sin City is a series of graphic novels that are illustrated and written by Frank Miller, which probably have the best faithful adaptation of graphic novel to movie adaptation ever, which is literally a comic that's portrayed in a movie kind of style. It has the same kind of aesthetic that you would see in a comic, which should really help you emphasize the importance of blacks, grays, and just the use of tone all around. And uh, there's also Raging Bull by Scorsese, and pretty much every other black and white movie that you can think of. And there are also three books that I would recommend, illustrated and written by Mark is Matteo Mestre, Framed Ink, Drawing and Composition for Visual Storytelling. And he also has Perspective 1 and Perspective 2, which are all really just kind of, you know, the infinity stones that you should gather up for your composition journey. Now, in these books that he covers, all you need to learn about perspective, using perspective and composition, and uh, the applying of shadows. Now, I have studied his books rather intensively, and like I said, if you can't afford these books, I'm pretty sure that you could find sample pages on Pinterest. Now, I'm not advocating for you to be stealing here but they should give you a glimpse of what these books are so you kind of look forward to purchasing them later on i think one of the most important parts is whenever you're reading a series you should really just pay attention to how the artist is applying screen tones unlike using grayscale you're actually using a, the different kind of uh, dpi and the kind of percentages and each percentage kind of gives a different feel and they're all used in a very different kind of manner in various different scenarios because each screen tone calls for a certain thing now i've personally not mastered this so i'm not going to pretend that i'm 
good at this at all i have a long ways to go in my understanding of value how to actually properly portray light but benny ain't got all time to be learning all this shit so please help me i got you fam so let's say you have a painting and an illustration now the most common thing to do is to throw that illustration into photoshop or clip studio paint and then convert it into grayscale and then after you do so you can kind of see how the values are applied in that into its comparison of color but here's the thing that's not going to really help you in manga because manga is already in gray so how the hell are you going to find out exactly what percentage or kind of what gray that artist is using because if you were to zoom in and color pick you're only going to see dots so that's really not going to help you now this video is single-handedly going to help you go from not understanding how to apply screen tones to pretty much getting a basic grasp of it you're going to need photoshop for this one all you're going to be doing is throwing it in photoshop you're using an image filter that converts the screen tones into a selectable version of value scale it really just shows you just the simplicity of it and you can adjust how strong you want it to be this video really just does a better explanation of what i'm trying to convey to you here and uh, i'll link that one also down below now you could use 3d from earlier for lighting and this should actually help you in the process a lot more since you're already using 3d for your for your anatomy and your reference now you could just simply use it for your lighting as well this is kind of like two birds in one stone which should really just make the process a lot more quicker also read shoujo manga this series is rather phenomenal as it kind of gives me the love sex and robots episode that just really feels rather bizarre and rather odd but at the same time the author has a really great use of various different kind of screen tones and typically this is kind of used in shoujo manga a lot or more romance centricated manga because they rely on more feeling and more screen tones that portray such feelings and it's best to know how to you apply these screen tones and just how to kind of capture for example like this one is always kind of used for the warm and fuzzy feeling kind of moment in comparisons to something like this or just the variety of it now this is also another video to help you on your screen tone journey because this is actually broken down by a professional mangaka so you could really follow their uh, advice instead of mine as like i said i'm still trying to get better at the use of screen tones and yeah number three is composition and paneling for the most part if you don't know composition and paneling are probably one of the most important parts as it dictates the flow of the page it's almost like you're directing a movie helping the audience visualize the story with a limited amount of frames to tell more with less and to have a flow that makes a reader go like god damn this shit smooth now i'll give you two series that'll make you fall in love with paneling in a really short time this one i mentioned in the last video which is probably one of my favorite series that i'm currently reading which is witch hat alter year it's a rather phenomenal series that makes you fall in love with just the flow of the page and just how the author uses paneling as you know paneling is simply a rectangle or a square at times and it could just feel sometimes rather boring but nevertheless there are built-in basic frames that i personally use all the time in clip studio paint two things to keep in mind horizontal space tends to be much bigger than vertical spacing between paneling this is just to give more separation between paneling so everything doesn't feel kind of rather crammed together which you'll tend to kind of notice in most series also this series is brand new on shonen jump and it probably has one of the best use of paneling that i've seen in a long time and that's probably the number one comment you'll see if you actually check the shonen jumps plus comment section as everybody seems to be falling in love with the paneling and that's kind of the main goal here is i think with proper use of paneling you learn to tell more with less and it's paneling is just really just composition it's how can i frame something in this limited amount of space whether that's just drawing someone's feet or drawing someone's hands or just drawing this little thing that just helps add to the scene and add to kind of your storytelling format now personally i am a visual learner i struggle sometimes to learn something from reading a book as i find it a little bit tedious at times i sometimes want to learn through visual means and to be honest with you i have found probably one of the best youtube channels and the major comment you'll see on this youtube channel is how the hell is this shit free that's called studio binders channel it's probably one of the best youtube channels that i've personally seen it's literally film school material wrapped up in youtube videos now they'll teach you everything from storytelling to breaking down scenes and to just everything that you need to learn on how to be a better director by breaking down some of the most famous scenes in movie history you'll see just how truly spectacular this youtube channel is and specifically you're gonna want to watch the composition video that they have it's about 20 minutes long i think you just need to continuously study films as that's one of the questions the creator of chainsaw man is always asked in his interviews how can i draw manga like you and his answer is always rather quite simple he says buy a netflix subscription and what he's talking about is you need to just go watch movies you need to learn how to study various different film scenes shots direction styles and just really everything that goes into it and to be honest with you that's what studio binder does a phenomenal job at from the variety of different videos they have all of this is just a lot to take in so your goal is to continuously learn how to improve at just telling a story overall now you have step four which is the biggest hurdle of them all it's really the basic understanding of perspective now if you're really bad at perspective i highly recommend 
recommend you go check out Stefan Travers' uh, YouTube channel. He breaks down various different techniques from one point perspective to two point to three point, always doing case studies of pictures that he has taken from uh, visiting Italy, France, and I believe mostly in Europe, as that's what he usually likes to do, drawing these huge, gigantic structures that would seem like they would take a humongous amount of time, but he does it in a rather a more simplified kind of approach. And to be honest with you, I really love his work. I always struggle with how much detail do I need to add to a background, and he adds detail from, from a close-up. If you were to zoom in, it's kind of simplified, but if you were to zoom out, it looks all put together. He has a video on this subject where he states that you, know, you shouldn't get overwhelmed with the amount of detail that you need to add because he always suggests drawing detail from afar, not having to be continuously so zoomed in because at the end of the day, you're not trying to replicate something one for one, trying to add a little bit of style to it, which I believe what his illustrations convey. The human eye tends to pick up the overall flow of a painting, specifically for backgrounds, which is why you just should be adding detail from afar and just to put the whole thing together instead of just continuously worrying about every single stone, every single little building and just trying to come up with a better composition. Now, this series that I'll recommend is probably the reason why I began to fall in love with drawing backgrounds. In the beginning, I used to dread drawing backgrounds, but then I read the series, which there's controversy, what you would call it. Some call it blam, some call it blame. But at the end of the day, it's just, to be honest with you, it's a masterpiece to me. And it's PewDiePie's favorite manga. So yeah, it just shows just how spectacular this work is. And if you were to read this manga and come out not wanting to draw backgrounds, then my friend, I don't think making manga is for you. No, I'm just playing. I believe the author majored in, in architecture in college and he also did construction. And he just said, you know what? I'm just going to go draw manga. The huge landscapes that are the reason why I fall in love with backgrounds personally myself. He creates these worlds that are just amazing and engulf you in its presence. It's dark, it's gritty, it's huge, it's ginormous, and it just makes you feel like you're going somewhere, but you're not going nowhere at all. But everywhere you go just has a sci-fi feel to it in this endless city that, that is a barrage. Now, I don't want to make this an entire blame video, but then the entire premise of blame is the world has been... I'm not even going to fucking try to... There's no way I'm going to try to explain blame. I feel like proper use of backgrounds, if simplified, could really just take your work from being somewhat mediocre to a really good piece of fiction. Now, personally, I'm not good at drawing perspective without Clip Studio Paint because it really just simplifies the process for me. From one point to two point to three point to all the way to fish eye, you could just really just do any perspective that you want. And the cool part about it is if you have your pen snap to the ruler, it will only let you draw based upon the correct perspective. And one of the coolest things is in the recent update, they've introduced fish eye. It conveys space in such a weird way that you're in a sense kind of being pulled in at five points. I'll be making a perspective video later on, so stay tuned for that. But nevertheless, uh, you could simply use one point, which is the easiest one to compare, is by applying it to the train tracks, two point, which is the side of the building, three point, which is when you're looking up at something, and then five point, which is the fish eye, when you're actually being kind of almost engulfed in the entire space in itself. Now, if you still really hate drawing backgrounds, then I highly suggest learning Blender. Geometry nodes are simply one of the best ways to reduce the amount of time that I'm spending on backgrounds. But the downside to learning Blender is its uh, learning curve is rather steep. But nevertheless, instead of constantly making your own backgrounds, there are things that are called geometry nodes, which are basically a rehash of multiple windows, doors, and walls, and it also tends to scatter things in a much quicker manner. There are a variety of different examples if you want to go down this rabbit hole, but the basic one is that I'm currently dabbling with, which is, is called Buildify. Buildify is just another example of the rehashing of different kind of buildings. What it's using is a bunch of different windows, doors, and walls. It's putting them all together into a, a random generator, and it's almost in a sense continuously generating from the same building block. Now, there's a downside to this is buildings tend to look the same. Also, this building bundle that I'm using, I believe the basic one is $20, and the one that I purchased is $40. It's It has a variety of different buildings. The annoying part about it is its learning curve is just kind of tricky at times, but you can create various different buildings from dark fantasy to all the way to sci-fi and some of the works that the creator has created are here and that's kind of your goal is is to learn how to get around certain things there's also a village generator which should cost you around like 10 bucks and you can kind of create a basic village if you're drawing something in a dark fantasy setting or just attack on titan kind of feel to be honest with you i use 3d all the time i'm constantly going on cg trader and going on the free section like hey yo i just don't feel like drawing this thing so i'm just gonna go on 3d on cg trader go on the free section slap it in the background and draw over it extract the line art and add my own detail to it and then boom we're done most of the stuff on the free section is royalty free which means you could use it however way you would like and then you know everything else is really just cheap as well i highly suggest like i said learning blender and there are various different videos i'll suggest max's work he's actually a rather phenomenal creator and he has a lot of different videos on blender but his stuff is a little bit complicated
complex so go in with a little bit of studies but now there's another option here which is using pictures this one is an entire video on its own but if you don't know your favorite mangeke uses pictures but the creator of oni sino pun pun breaks down how he would use an actual picture he would go outside take a picture posterize it add some screen tones to it extract the line art and then draw the characters over it and then blend them in the backgrounds and then boom pretty much has a manga page now this approach really simplifies the manga making process and it really just helps you with lighting shading and just figuring out the perspective instead of constantly having to come up with new perspective and new angles and new scenery but the reason why this method is flawed according to his words is you are limited to the real world he said the hurdle was every time that he needed to create a background that he would need to go somewhere and take a picture and that's why he eventually began to use unreal which is the next little frontier or something that would really help you along your journey is if you were to start learning how to use unreal engine now unreal engine is a game engine but for the most part you could still use it for your manga background now this one the learning curve isn't that steep i've created some scenes with it and i'll show you some examples and here's a shader that i would also apply the comic book feel the annoying part about this is i would say one it, it takes a lot of computer power to use unreal but then also you have to make an entire scene it just takes time to create a scene instead of getting ready of like all right i need to draw this background i draw it as quickly as i can and then i move on to the next scene i think the advantage of using unreal is you have the capability of drawing a scene from different angles that almost would be rather difficult to depict or draw from imagination and constantly having to switch angles of the same scene or draw the same scene in a variety of different positions you would come to realize of oh, oh shit this is probably why i should be relying more on 3d one thing i need to emphasize most artists and most mangaka are actually really good at drawing backgrounds when i say that all these guys are taking shortcuts i'm not trying to reduce the amount of work or their amount of sheer dedication to the craft that they have put in it's just simply just the way it is if you have a deadline of two weeks and you got to come up with something and constantly draw backgrounds and you're spending most of the time drawing backgrounds yet you're going to see why most of these creators one have assistance and two drawing backgrounds is a pain in the ass because they're really really time consuming in comparison to everything else the more we've went on this video and went on this journey the more you're beginning to realize just how truly difficult it is to make a really well crafted piece of fiction especially in the manga space you're asked to do so much and that's why you're always told to create a one shot and a one shot is just really your way into the field the most important part is forcing yourself to learn things that aren't interesting in the beginning or just seem like it's a drag because at the end of the day you don't need to learn these things you could just simply have basic kind of backgrounds it doesn't have to matter but there's an idea of perfection and then there's an idea of just getting better at the craft i'm not a master at all these things that i've showed you it's just things that i feel like i should force myself to learn and i feel like by incorporating these things into my work i feel i could just propel the work from mediocre to just a really good piece of fiction or something just really eye-catching you want in a sense to create eye candy for the viewer one of the most beautiful quotes i heard was drawing manga or drawing comics is learning to draw boring shit and kind of embracing the journey of drawing the mundane in order to get to the glamorous gorgeous pages that we're all looking forward to finally the center which is the use of action lines speech bubbles and just kind of the cherry on top there is a couple of chapters that i found should help you it's by typesetting the ones that usually do the raw translations and upload it ahead of time they have a specific guide on how to actually lay uh, speech bubbles for example like you have this one where uh, you don't know kind of what to do here whether it's a b and c and the correct one is uh, c the words are divided evenly and it makes a, a much easier easier reading process for example like this one i wonder if senpai will ever notice me and i wonder if senpai will ever notice me you see how it's kind of divided uh, the first two words on top and then shaped like the bubble that it's trying to portray so i'll link this one down below and you can kind of see the difference in how for example you're supposed to have uh, a clean amount of space that surrounds the actual font within the speech bubble just to make a and much easier reading process this one's a given because there really is no specific website or specific thing that you could watch but I found the easiest one is whenever you're reading a manga just pay attention pay attention to how the speech bubbles are drawn how they're placed pay attention to how the words or the i guess the the long sentences are divided most of the time like i said when i read indie works i always notice that when it's a long sentence it's on a big ass speech bubble which could seem daunting because the annoying part is you're not creating a book you're creating a comic that's supposed to have less words less words is just better nobody wants to sit there reading a harry potter book unless you're at the final stages of hunter hunter where it in a sense becomes a light Novel. now this website also provides you with what words to use for sound effects and it has the english translation the japanese translation and this is probably one of the best websites that you'll find but another thing is clip zero paint has a bunch of like speech bubbles pre-installed into the program and also you could just download some on the on the asset library and yeah that's it now we have covered a lot in this video and my head hurts just trying to get 
do the script and try and edit this video and to be honest with you this was just a rather pain in the ass to make because there's just really so much to cover i don't want to divide these into a variety of different videos and just kind of drag this thing on though i'll do some different videos of the specific ones that i've talked about that really just require in depth this was a general overview of the websites that should really just help you along your journey and i hope you incorporate most of them that i've recommended because it took me forever to learn these and just to kind of like gather them and i think the rather scary part that i've always found jumping into this medium is how much i needed to learn before i even began which really always discouraged me because i'm like man no matter what i do my work doesn't look nowhere near as these guys who are just producing this on a weekly basis and it's taking me forever to get to that stage where i can you know finish a page a day or finish a page in four hours you gotta know anatomy you gotta know shading you gotta know lighting perspective composition background speech bubbles action lines it just like feels a huge hurdle to climb and to be honest with you the thing that i've come to realize is in the pursuit of trying to make my own manga that yeah it's a difficult journey and a tough one in hand because i feel like it's more of a criteria that you need to meet and the more you try to meet the criteria the more you feel like you're just rather unqualified for the position which is probably why most people become assistants first to a professional and then they go and make their own you can see this in the some of the assistants of creator of chainsaw man and as they later on became rather prolific uh, mangekas of their own and having long serialized series but nevertheless no matter how unprepared you are for the journey ahead i feel like you should just simply begin what i love about reading manga in comparison to comics for me it's just just seeing an artist's evolution over the years them going from a pretty good artist to a really rather phenomenal one really just speaks volumes to me because it's just amazing man it's just seeing someone go through this journey and putting their best foot forward over and over again in this craft that really just demands so much of you to the point of like insanity just try to improve day by day and that's just kind of how i look at it i'll be better by tomorrow i'll be better by the next page continuously getting better then eventually i'll just you know hit that point where i'm like you know what i'm satisfied with my work this video was long and uh, I truly want to say thank you for all the love and support on the last video. I did not expect it to, to kind of reach that amount of viewers. I believe it's at like, what, 50k right now. And if you would have told me 50,000 people got to listen to me do my poly impression, I don't know if I would have done it. But anyways, thanks for all the love and support. I look forward to improving these videos. And yeah, leave a comment down on what questions that you got regarding the manga making process. I'm no pro at the end of the day. I'm just someone who really loves the medium and is constantly studying it and just who, who wants to kind of continuously improve at it. I look forward to improving my own our styles and i look forward to making more of these videos comment down any questions or any regards that you have about the space and and yeah like subscribe and i'll see you on the next one